Want to achieve your dream goal? Listen to the tips from the guy who made it happen to himself. I dropped 70 pounds going from a 4X to a 1X in four years. I went from 10K to six figures without a college degree. You too can get the goals you set. It's time to live your best life now. I'm your host, Tony Woodall, and welcome to Goal Getting Podcast. Hey, Goal Getters. Welcome to Goal Getting Podcast. This is your host, Tony Woodall. I wanted to tell you about our guest today. Michael Yablowski is a LinkedIn expert, and I first met Michael Yablowski in a mastermind group that I am belong to, and Michael was doing a session on how to effectively utilize LinkedIn to build brand awareness, to improve our visibility, and to get us, uh, you know, where we can be effective on LinkedIn. So when I saw the, you know, Michael's presentation to our mastermind group and learned some of the things that he showed us, I wanted to share that with you, or at least introduce you to Michael, because he talks about several good tips uh, in how to set up a LinkedIn profile and things like that uh, in his training and things. So uh, I want to tell you that, you know, a lot of times, you know, if we're looking for new careers or need to boost our careers, if one of our goals is to improve our business or our own uh, visibility on LinkedIn, whether it's for job hunting or whatever, it's important to do it right. And Michael has some great tips about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. It can help us with a lot of things, like I said, in business and in personal goals. We can get out there and, you know, utilize this tool that's out there. So I wanted to share this interview with Michael Yablowski today, and I hope you enjoy it. And we'll come back and talk with you after the episode so that um, we can just get right into the meat of it here. So I'm going to introduce Michael Yablowski. Hello, Goal Getters. We're going to make it a great day today. So welcome back to Goal Getting Podcast. I am Tony Woodall, your host, and I am so grateful that you're here listening to us today because we have a great guest with us today, Mr. Michael Yublowski. I first heard Michael on a webinar for my mastermind group, and we were learning how to use LinkedIn to grow our business and ourselves. Now, knowing that many of you have goals that would benefit from using LinkedIn, I thought it would be great for us to have Michael on the show and to help you get the goals you set for LinkedIn. Michael Yablowski retired from corporate America after a successful 30-year direct sales and marketing career. Now, Michael's time is now divided between consulting and doing volunteer work. And since 2009, Michael has coached small business owners and executive job seekers in using LinkedIn to network and market their businesses or themselves. He focuses on the importance of using relevant keywords and organic search techniques. Michael's formula for success on LinkedIn and the Internet is target market, establish your brand, increase your visibility, and get found. On his website, DIYWebGem.com, where he freely shares what he has learned about the Internet marketing. Now, Michael, I really enjoyed your talk on our mastermind group, and I've learned a great deal from that. So thank you so much for coming on our show today. Always a pleasure, Tony. Thank you. Now, Michael, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Where do you come from? What do you do or have you done? And what are you doing now? Um, Well, I came out of school and went into human resources, uh, except in that day and age, it was called personnel industrial relations. Um, Got out of that and managed a family retail business for a few years until I got um, into direct sales because we had to close that business. So up until that point, I was really used to retail sales because I had also worked my way through college doing retail sales uh, and then got thrown into direct sales, which was completely different than retail sales where people are coming into you, you know, coming into your store. Even though I was doing the marketing for the store, you know, I wasn't out there knocking on doors. Um, uh, eventually, I tried a couple of different things. They didn't work for me. And eventually, out of forced choice, he had to go into selling uh, electronic security systems. And I started out in the residential field. Uh, got quite renowned and worked my well, my way up as a top producer and then 
uh, company turned around and said, you're too valuable for us and we want to push you into commercial. So I got into commercial. So I spent about the first 16 years in uh, residential and then the last 12 years of my campaign of my career in commercial direct sales uh, with a little bit of residential I was still dealing with high-end uh, accounts uh, uh, Walgreen family uh, executives of Helene Curtis uh, Michael Jordan was an account of mine for 12 years etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had talked about retiring uh, uh, Early, early on, I, I really wanted to look at retiring by the uh, year 2000 uh, because of health reasons and medical, you know, the cost of medical insurance. I just stayed where I was. Um, but prior to that, I launched my wife into a business that I thought might be a retirement business. And it, so we launched her into a party planning business in, in 1990. Um, I... 2005 or so, I had already decided that that was not my business, that was her business, and if I actually was going to retire or look forward to retiring, I should be looking at at doing something myself, and that's when I decided to throw her on the internet and see what what was going on, and of course, that was just about the same time that high speed was becoming very, very reasonable to average people, and it was like, okay, dear, let's spend a thousand dollars and see what's going on. <clears throat> and um, I never spent a thousand dollars, Tony. No, uh, I stopped paying for anything uh, within three or four months, and discovered organic search and SEO, and made money from the get go. Mm-hmm. Uh, it took me two and a half years before the light bulb went on, though. And that was just about the time when I started getting involved in LinkedIn. And I set a retirement date, uh, got more and more involved in LinkedIn, and actually started teaching LinkedIn to my superiors where I was working, and then launched the business. Uh, did not launch it being with LinkedIn in mind. I would launched it um, uh, resting on... My previous experience and my success with search engine optimization and then working or using WordPress as a publishing platform for small businesses. In fact, my first client, my first paying client, that's exactly what I did. I launched a website for him um, and then we decided to market and I said, you know what? The best market that I can see for you is LinkedIn. All right. This is 2010, Tony. What was happening then with the with with small businesses looking for loans? The banks' funds were dried up. They were not loaning to small businesses at that time, and that's the exact business that this guy was in. He had the money. He was making loans. Of course, they were points over prime, but he had the money. And within two or three months, it was he was on the way to building a business just because of launching this website, which he had delayed launching for months and years, and then me directing him and showing him how to make it on LinkedIn. And that was the start of a fantastic business that has now grown to to cover parts of the United other parts of the United States outside of the Chicago area. So I know that's a long winded, but I. I wanted to let you know how this all tied together, you know, how I gradually moved into this and how it became evident to me that in certain categories, LinkedIn, especially for B2B, is a fantastic networking and marketing tool. Yeah, I was uh, in LinkedIn early adopter as well. I think in 2005 or 2006, I was actually on LinkedIn and had started a sales career as a loan officer for a mortgage company. Talked to my boss and said, Oh, you need to get on LinkedIn. He goes, No, that's a fad. You know, there's, I'm not, I don't trust it. You know, things like that. Of course, he's on there now, but, uh, it took him, I think eight years or so, <laughs> five years to get on it, but he's on there now. Um, but you know, yeah. So you, you, you talked about not seeing the light that, uh, you know, w- what about that? I mean, how, how, what made you see the light with the LinkedIn? Well, it was more, more like seeing the light. 
first of all, on the Internet. That was the first two and a half years. I didn't see the light on LinkedIn because when I was introduced to LinkedIn, it was by an attorney friend of mine, um, and I looked at it as a job seekers network, uh, a job seekers platform, which of course it was, and that's that's how it was launched. And I said to him, "I'm not looking for a job. You know, I'm in the tail end of my career. Uh, I'm in a very enviable position as being a top producer and not having to work more than four hours a day." Uh, I had a lot of time on my hands, so I'm doing other things. By the time I came back to LinkedIn, well, pre- let me preface this by saying I went to Facebook because I thought Facebook could enable me to do what I wanted, at starting groups, starting discussions, et cetera, et cetera, which Facebook was doing at that time. By the time I came back to LinkedIn, LinkedIn had changed, and they were starting to cultivate the business community and, you know, had the discussion groups going, had the Q&As, if we remember the questions, the questions and answer forums going, and it became more of a business information exchange, and I love that, and I just got into it, I made alliances, I made friends, I did work for people. It was it, it was the difference between night and day. It just it was not that job, just that job seeking platform that it was when I first looked at it. Right. I think people still think of it as only being a job seeker output, uh, you know, tool. And I know it is the place to go if you're looking for a job or want to be found for a job. That is definitely the place. You know, I don't I don't think we see any more. Career Builder or Monster.com ads on TV anymore because I don't think people are using them effectively or at all anymore. Uh, I know most of the recruiters I talk to, they do most of their searching for talent on LinkedIn. So it still is a big job seeker tool and also, as you mentioned, a business to business. But how do you, I've noticed a lot of business to consumer companies are starting to go out there and some ineffectively as they spam me, but, uh, I noticed a lot of that going on, you know, on LinkedIn now. So how can B2C companies benefit from LinkedIn? Yeah, but you, you've got an, you know, an oxymoron there. You know, you said effectively spam. I don't think those two get together. Well, I said they need to use it effectively, but, and they are starting to spam me instead. Right. And that's the problem because if they look at LinkedIn as a sales tool, I think they're making a cardinal mistake. It's not a sales tool. It's, you know, if you want to use it, if you want to use their ads, their direct ads, and you can target a market out there, <laughs> I think it could be very, very effective. <laughs> but I'll give you a for instance. I'm dealing with a realtor, and the realtor was referred to me by someone because he's looking at LinkedIn to be a marketing tool for him. And it took me about an hour to convince him that LinkedIn is not a marketing tool for, for residential realtors. There's no way. Because how can you target somebody who's looking to buy a house in a particular suburb or a particular town on LinkedIn? There's no way to do that. How would you know? Now, what I said to him was, do you use referral sources? You know, is a, is a mortgage broker somebody you would be talking to? And he said, no, not really. Mortgage brokers are even looking to me. And I said, well, can you target anybody? And he said, not really. I said, you know what? That LinkedIn doesn't, you don't belong on LinkedIn. However, however, if you're trying to build alliances with referral sources, you know, if you want to, you know, talk to insurance people and make relationships with insurance people, if you want to you know, you know, for instance, if you're in the commercial market, you want to make um, uh, friends with uh, 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 managers of properties, etc. It's a great place. It's a it's a fantastic place uh, to do that. But I don't think direct selling or direct marketing for B two C is is working out there. Referrals is one thing. Another thing is sourcing, sourcing uh, suppliers. Sourcing manufacturers, sourcing alternatives, that is a great, great 
place uh, for B2C to be on LinkedIn. Um, there are a couple of others, but I don't think it's I don't think it's a direct marketing platform for B2C. No, and I, I would agree with that. I think the key is, as you mentioned, there's referrals and relationships. You know, developing the relationships with people who can be referrals sources for you. And I think uh, that realtor you're speaking with and others just haven't quite got that concept, even you know, in the local market, much less in the uh, you know online market. They've got to start thinking more about building the relationships with people who can provide referrals at some point in time. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. So now, are there any secrets to success on LinkedIn? You being uh, one of our experts out there on that uh, and how LinkedIn works, what are some of the uh, things that we need to look at for you know having a success secret to LinkedIn? Well, the first is just what I mentioned that understanding it is not a selling. A platform and acknowledging what you also said that it's a business relationship building platform. And, um, I learned that I, I, I was really quite naive when I got out of school, even into the business world initially. And it wasn't until I got into sales that I really understood the benefit of re- re- building relationships and those relationships bringing in recommendations and referrals to you. Uh, which are gold. I mean, to a salesperson, uh, that qualified introduction, that guy thinking you're, or, or woman, uh, thinking you're the next best thing to slice white bread and being your evangelist, which is, you know, what we use social media to find evangelists out there is gold. And you get, you know, once you have somebody like that who's trumpeting you and promoting you, um, your selling process becomes so much easier, it's unbelievable. And so the people that's starting out or can't accept this, that's that's difficult to under to to, to grasp because it's a long term proposition. And most of the people that I find are after short term results and that doesn't work in this day and age. It just doesn't work. There's this is uh, a hard road. Uh, there's no easy, there's no magic bullets out there. There's some rules of engagement. Um, and there's a, you know, an etiquette that's involved. You've got to really play nice in the sandbox is the way I put it. You, you got to remember what, what made you successful in kindergarten. Uh, you got to understand that you got to pay your dues. Nobody can walk in there and, make an instant splash. It just, and I know because I tried it. I thought I was the next best thing to slice white bread in the SEO world. Now, Tony, I guarantee you, unequivocally, I know more and can get better results for small businesses. I'm not talking about enterprise businesses, and I'm not talking about mid caps. I'm talking about Small businesses, even solopreneurs, I know more than 99% of SEOs out there and marketers on the Internet. But the competition is so fierce and there's so much noise out there that it's it's really difficult to stand head and shoulders above anybody out there. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the challenges. And... uh, so there are no secrets. It's, it's hard work. It's, it's, it's understanding that what goes around comes around. Mm-hmm. Um, it's establishing your, your professionalism and credibility and proving it. And then the way you conduct business. And if you, if you do that honorably and if you do that with good intent and working towards your customers, eventually it, com- it comes back to you in spades. Absolutely. Yep. That, uh, I said relationships are key and not being the type of person who just goes out and spams people. That's, I said, one of my pet peeves is, you know, when I try to connect with somebody and then the first thing they do instead of saying hello or how are you is I get a sales pitch, uh, in my inbox and, uh, I usually end up just connecting from that person, but, uh, so do or, I. or telling them very fiercely, you know, what, you know, you're not even going to kiss me first. You know, but, uh, I'm going to have to use that. <laughs> yeah. But no kiss. Come on, guy. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, it, 
it can be very put offish and no matter whether it's on online marketing or regular marketing, I have the same problem when I go to networking events and the first thing I do is get a sales pitch when I say, hi, my name's Tony and go, hi, I'm Joe and I got this great product I want to sell you. Well, you know, I turn around and walk off normally. So, uh, you know, that's just not the way to do it on social. That's why it's called social in my opinion. So, uh, you know, you have to be a little bit more social. Now, Michael, you talk about, you know, step by step processes before, uh, that I've heard you in leveraging LinkedIn. Can you explain that and what some of those steps might be? I, I got it down to a science and, and I, I actually have went, I borrowed something from the new coach and I, you know, I know this is a, a nationwide or, a audience um, of the Chicago Bears, John Fox, who says, trust the process. Trust the process. Uh, I added something to it. Trust the process, stay the course. And it is a matter of staying the course when it comes to LinkedIn, but I really have broken it down to a four, to, to a four or five step process. The first and most important is what's your plan? You know, tell me what you want to do. I'm going to tell you how you can do it, especially on LinkedIn or especially on marketing on the internet. But you got to tell me what the plan is. Who do you want to talk to? You know, what do you want to get found for? Uh, you know, what differentiates you? What makes you different? Once you decide that, then you've got to build your brand around that. And where people completely miss the boat when it comes to LinkedIn and when it comes to marketing on the Internet is they don't understand the impact of getting the proper keywords that people want to find you for. You have to factor something into that, though, that a lot of people just absolutely forget. And they have to go in and check out the competition. And my philosophy is if the competition is too great, in other words, if they're there and they're already entrenched, find something else. You know, as hard as that may be, find something else. But you at least have to go in there and research it. Um, I've got a story about a headhunter that I've been dealing with who for a year and a half was working with another company with absolutely no results. And I did an analysis and I said, you're shotgunning out there. You're, you're you're looking at the entire picture here where you should be looking at your strengths and where the market is at right now. And in the course of a few short weeks, I turned him around and he landed two deals where he had been blank for so long. It was unbelievable just by focusing on what he did best. In other words, what differentiated him from his competition, we went in, we did a little rework work on his website. Um, uh, I changed the way he was blogging. I changed some of the keywords he was using in his blog. And all of a sudden, he's getting deals. Well, there was no magic to this. There was a plan. Right. Yep. Part of that plan was building his brand and deciding on those keywords, which goes back to the marketing and who's the target. Now, the next step on the process is building a network. And uh, my philosophy about that is very simple. It's not who you know, it's who they know. It's your second-level connections that give you the biggest opportunity out there uh, to conduct future business. And as, as well as you know anybody, you have no idea how many people that person knows and how they can possibly become future clients or alliance partners, et cetera, et cetera, to you. And without a network, you can't make that determination. Once that's done, once those building blocks, those three or four steps that I've just gone over are done, then you've got to raise your visibility. The reason I do not like doing raising visibility until then is a, a, a potential client or a potential prospect may land on your profile and say, why should I do business with this person? You know, I don't believe them. You know, they're not, they're not offering me any proof. They're not offering me any substance. 
you know, they're just asking me to buy. It's, it's as you were saying before, the spamming or this going to a networking event where people are constantly thinking about themselves rather than thinking about what they could do for others, which is the basis of social selling. So once we have that platform, then you increase the visibility. And increasing that visibility, and you and I were discussing this before we, before we started this uh, podcast, is it's going to depend on you. It's going to depend on what you like to do. It's going to depend on what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. Um, I don't like to write, but I understand that publicizing and publishing on Publisher is a great way for me to attract potential clients. And I have that from across the nation just by them reading articles that I publish on LinkedIn. It's much more effective now than publishing on my own blog. I don't even publish on my blog anymore. I publish mainly on LinkedIn right now. Yeah, I think I've heard that a lot recently that, you know, the LinkedIn publisher is the place to start publishing, you know, because you have such a larger reach. And if you're worried about traffic on, you know, getting people to come to your blog that you have out there, you know, you've got an open audience essentially on LinkedIn and they publish it and they, you know, you have a greater opportunity with your network and the network's network to be able to get seen. So I think that's a valid point that people need to understand right. uh, with the LinkedIn publishing. So excellent but, point there. Right. But too many people are making the same mistakes. It's like this, uh, what I, as I expressed about this headhunter, they have no idea how to use keywords. They have no idea how to use tagging. They have no idea how to use markup language because the one thing you have to realize about publisher that most people do not realize is it's searchable by Google. So in addition to getting the exposure on LinkedIn, you're also getting the exposure on Google. Well, if you don't understand the basic principles of keywords, if you haven't done the research work, if you haven't determined who the competition is, and if you haven't, oh God, I'm sorry. I, another thought just came to me. And if you don't examine the analytics, because LinkedIn affords you the analytics, then you're barking up the wrong tree and you're shotgunning again. And I don't care how many articles you put out, out there. If the cash register isn't ringing, if you aren't getting people knocking on your door, it's worthless. And the reason I said, oh, God, was because this brought up another instance. I'm working with a CPA, and because he works for a large firm, he doesn't have his own website or his own blog. And so what he's got to do is he's got a blog on LinkedIn, and that's one of his traffic attractors. And I said to him, I said, have you looked at the analytics? And he says, I didn't even know there were analytics available. I said, well, let's look at the analytics, because I've looked at your analytics, because he, he, he gave me access to his, his his LinkedIn account. You have no idea how many LinkedIn profiles I actually run out there. Um, and I said, the majority of people that are reading your articles are fellow CPAs. So you are educating your competition. I said, is that your target market? And he looked at it. It was like his eyes wide opened up. He said, I didn't realize this. I said, of course you didn't, because you're not using the right keywords. You're not slanting the article towards your market, which are small and medium-sized businesses and high net worth investors. Those are your people. And you're slanting these articles as if you're writing a course in CPA. We changed, we just shifted that a little bit, and now he's getting results on that. It's it's amazing, but it goes back to this, what it took two and a half years for the light bulb to go, to go on. The, the Internet is driven by keywords, mm-hmm. and the small businesses are just, they're, they don't understand how to, again, Research and apply those keywords in a practical way. And you know what? It just, it, it means more business for me to tell you the truth, Tony. No, no, I agree. And you brought up some really great points. You know, the publishing platform is a great tool. It's out there. It's, uh, you know, again, as I mentioned, as you mentioned, 
that it's a blogging platform that we can utilize, but it is just that it's a blogging platform. It still has the capability of being searched by Google and searched, you know, people to be able to find it through Google. But that requires, as you mentioned, the proper keywords, the proper research on those keywords. And because that is, as you said, the key to driving traffic, the right traffic to your website. I think that's very uh, you know, astute to be able to realize that all of a sudden all my people coming to my website or my competitors learning from it. That's not who your intent was. No. And obviously he didn't have an intent or a plan, as you said, uh, when he got started on that to think about. So those are some fantastic keys for, you know, blogging in general, but especially on LinkedIn Publisher. If you're going to use that tool, you might as well use it to its best ability. Well, especially when you're, if you're in the B2B market. Right. LinkedIn came out with some statistics on this and said that 45%, 45% of the people who read LinkedIn Pulse, LinkedIn Publisher, are in the upper ranks of management in businesses. 45%. God, that is my target market, Tony. I want yeah. to be there. And if that's your target market, that's where you belong. Now, I work with people who can't do that or who willing to write. And then there's other ways to do th- to do it. There's ways to use updating. There's ways to use curating. There's ways to get into discussion groups. There's all kinds of ways and everything depends on what your target market is, what your strengths and weaknesses are, what you like to do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm working with a tool and die guy, a tool and die manufacturer. He will not write. He is extremely well versed in his field and reads a lot of articles in print, in print, in magazines. And what I have told him, what I have shifted him to do is via gleaning some of the information on the internet and going to these digital copies of these magazines. He's out there sharing this information with his target market now. And that seems to be working effectively for him, uh, but he will not write. And I will not ghostwrite for him because I don't know anything about his industry, to tell you the truth. Right, yeah. But that does lead, as you start, you know, finding people like that, that opens up opportunities for people of, who are copywriters or ghostwriters to potentially do something like that if they find people like that, so... Uh, you know, cause there are a lot of people who don't want to write. And, uh, but like you mentioned, curating is another tool on LinkedIn even that you can use to, you know, help further your business. So. And the, the irony of it is a lot of people concentrate on the bigger groups. And I've gotten in essence more business out of the smaller groups where I can show how I'm different or show my expertise in a very, very small group. But then again, that's the philo- my philosophy of target marketing rather than going after the big guys and developing a niche and develop and becoming the go-to person in that niche uh, rather than trying to be a small fish in a big pond. So that happens to be my particular set of tactics. But my last step, and this is how we started a while back in this process, is for the people who want to be aggressive marketers. And that is for people to uh, be able to, who are able to target market the people that they want to talk to and are willing to go in there and via the search parameters that are available to them on LinkedIn, are able to seek those people out and start a conversation with those people. And that is the ultimate. That is... Um, what LinkedIn is really all about, because that's what the headhunters and the corporate staff that are seeking great resources for jobs are doing. And as small business people, we can do the same thing, because LinkedIn gives us the same tools that it gives the headhunters out there. And uh, again, most people are oblivious to that. But I don't think that works until... Again, you've got your brand, you've got your network, and you've got some visibility so you can prove your credibility and professionalism. So it is a hard, it is a, it, it is a task. But again, if you're looking for long-term results and you're going to be in business for another 10, 15, or 20 years, it's, 
it's the place to be. I, uh, I actually found out, um, that a nephew of mine who's in his early forties is looking for a job. And I have been, he's working and he recently changed jobs, but he's really unhappy where he's at right now. And, uh, I approached him again on LinkedIn because I've been trying to get him on LinkedIn for years. And he is on LinkedIn. He did do a profile. In fact, he's got two profiles on LinkedIn right now. And he's got all of one connection, which I believe is me right now. And we had a one-hour conversation just this past Tuesday. And um, he's going to start it. Good, now, good. It's going to be a little late. It's going to be a little late for him. But um, I looked at him and I said, Think about this. You have 30 plus years that you're going to be working that you have to look forward to working. Don't you think you ought to start looking at this as another possibility for you outside of Facebook and your small circle of friends? And with that, he just, it was like his eyes lit open when he realized he had that much time that he had to continue in his, in working that he's got to find other ways and other resources uh, to establish himself. No, nope, that's good. And I have, I have a daughter looking for work, and I did the same thing with her last night, as a matter of fact, talked to her about LinkedIn and things. That something that you have to look at if you want to advance your career, if you want to get a job, you have to start using it and use it effectively and finding out from experts like you, Michael Yubloski, and uh, find out how you can take advantage of LinkedIn and use its uh techniques and the SEO and the keywords and things like that to further your career, further your business and things like that. So, Michael, what do you recommend as a first step for our listeners in looking at LinkedIn? you got to reflect and determine what your target market is. Um, without understanding who you want to talk to, and what you want to get found for, you're just going to continue kicking the can down the road. In essence, um, you got to focus. You got, and that, and Tony, you know, getting onto your subject, that's what goal setting is all about. You know, exactly. It's, where exactly. do I want to go? Where do I want to be? You know, where do I want to be in five years? What do I want to do? You know, where, where do I want to be in, in, in three months? You know, most people, and you know the old adage, Spend more time planning their vacation than planning their future. Yep. Um, that's all it is. It's a matter, <clears throat> excuse me, a matter of goal setting. Exactly. The second thing is you have, if you take one thing away from today, you have to understand the proper selection of relevant, and I use that emphatically, relevant keywords is important for to be found anywhere on the internet. For you to be found on LinkedIn, for you to be found on Google, for you to be found on Facebook, anywhere, you've got to get relevant keywords. Not just any keywords, but keywords that are relevant, again, to your target and relevant to the competition. You know, is it going to be something you're going to be battling from today until the end of your business career, or is it something that you're going to develop a niche in and be the go-to person, and that is is almost like what I call the ever-ready bunny. It just keeps going and going and going and going, and occasionally you have to change the battery, and that's all you have to do. Uh, and I think the third and final step is you got to make a commitment. Uh, you know, the old adage, you got to put some skin in the game, you got to be willing to do the grunt work and look at this from a long-term um, ROI, return on investment, where it's worth it, um, versus something that you're paying for. You know, if you want to pay for results, if you want to pay other people to do this for you, they will do this. I, de I deal, I actually do SEO work for somebody who... Uh, builds networks for people who are too busy or don't want to do it on LinkedIn. 
Well, if you want to do that, that's fine. You're going to have to pay somebody a couple hundred bucks a month, three, four hundred dollars a month to do that for you. Um, but if you want to, if you're looking for quality, you don't go that route because they're producing quantity. They're producing numbers. They're not producing quality. So you can pay for it or you can do it yourself, but somebody's got to do the grunt work. But if you keep your nose to the grindstone and you do it just like the goal setting, you know, you set up the goal and you don't let any obstacle interfere in you attaining that goal. If you hit a brick wall, you know what? Shift over to the next dimension, okay? You know, downshift, chain, you know, turn 90 degrees and then upshift. And once you find the direction that you want to go into, then, you know, go into the upper gears and, and start accelerating. Exactly. Great, great thoughts, Michael. That's perfect. And thank you so much for those tips that will help our goal getters get the goals they set uh, in using LinkedIn. And I do believe it is a very powerful tool. Uh, I appreciate the information that you've shared with us today. And I have a couple quick questions because I do respect your time and we don't want to go past what we've specified. Uh, we typically ask all of our guests, you know, we are very motivated and we sometimes use quotes and, uh, to motivate us or to keep us inspired. And so I always ask us, our guests, what quote hangs on your wall? What quote have you used to help keep you going, keep you motivated and keep you inspired? One quote that's on my mirror is, if it is to be, it's up to me. Uh-huh. If it is to be, it's up to me. And I don't remember who said that, but uh, that's probably a very, one of the most powerful quotes that I've ever heard in my life. And it, uh, it really is up to you. So if it is to be, it's up to me. So thank you so much, Michael. That's an excellent quote. Um, now, we also like to talk about habits. And obviously one of our habits is to get on LinkedIn and do it properly. But uh, what are some of the habits that you have for success that help drive you through your career as a sales uh, person in, you know, direct sales and all the businesses that you have. What's one of the habits that has helped you get to where you are today? Um, I think I have a couple of habits that help. Uh, number one is I like to review my goals regularly and I'm very, very disciplined when I first got married. And the responsibility of marriage and, and subsequently having a child um, rested upon my shoulders. It was a, a revelation to me. It was, you know, stopping the carefree attitude that I had. And part of that was because of a threatening illness. I actually had cancer when I was 30 years old. And it was, you know, that weight of not knowing whether you're to live or not, and having to wait five years to, to determine whether you were cancer-free or not was a tremendous, tremendous burden on, on me. And uh, we were also going through very difficult financial times after after a couple of years, and I put my wife on a budget, and uh, God bless, she was, you know, she came through, and, and she, you know, was really the reason um, you know, why, why we were able to survive. When I had pay dirt in the sales field, I, instead of getting overly confident, we went back on the budget because I said the next goal that we have to set is our financial stability, our financial retiring, you know, being able to live without the stress of money worries. And the discipline there was reverting back to the discipline that originally made you successful even after you became successful. Um, and the third thing is my to-do list. I always have a to-do list, and every morning I get up and I prioritize what I've got to get done on that to-do list. Review goals regularly. Have discipline and it'll stick with you in, through the bad times and the good times. And having a to-do list and following through on that. Excellent habits, Michael. Thank you for sharing those. And uh, one last thing as we start to leave today, folks, I appreciate you joining us on Goal Getting Podcast. Whether you're a first-time listener or somebody who comes back every week, we do thank you and I appreciate it. 
Uh, Michael, as we get ready to leave, do you have some parting words of wisdom? What's the best advice to our listeners that are trying to achieve their goals uh, on LinkedIn and in, you know, social media in general or just, you know, your parting words of wisdom in anything? I'm going to have to go back to something I talked about earlier. Trust the process and stay the course. Excellent. That's, those are great. And that's from Michael Yablowski. And Michael, thank you again for joining us today. It's been a lot of value, I think, to our listeners. And, uh, they will hopefully share that with their friends so that they can, you know, get some benefit from it as well. But, uh, listeners on the goal getters, I do appreciate you, uh, listening. And, you know, I'm going to put how to contact Michael. And Michael, will you tell us how they can get in touch with you real quick. And I'll put it on the show notes for this episode at goalgettingpodcast.com slash Michael, and you'll be able to get the links to his uh, contact information. But go ahead and tell us, Michael, real quick how they can get in touch with you. The easiest way to get in touch with me is to pick up a phone and call me because I will talk for a few minutes about LinkedIn with anybody and everybody in the world. It's that my it's my passion. And my cell phone is 847-209-6335. And don't be remiss in calling. Please do it or text me. Excellent. Thank you, Michael, for being open and putting that out there. And it will be on the show notes. We do have his website uh, link out. We'll have it out there as well. Uh, Michael, thank you again so much. I look forward to, you know, continuing our relationship and continuing working with you. And if there's anything we can do for you on the Goal Getter podcast, let me know. And uh, Goal Getters, thank you for listening. And we'll talk with you next time. Hey, Goal Getters, I hope you enjoyed that uh, episode with uh, Michael Yablowski. Uh, there's really some key points that he brought up with LinkedIn that are very important. One is on a B2C, it's not necessarily, and B2C being business to consumer, it's not necessarily the best way to target a market for things like real estate. I've seen a lot of realtors out there that have started advertising their properties in their local communities on LinkedIn. And that's really not the best place to do that. It's not uh, geared for that. You can't target, as Michael said on the um, interview, that you can't really target not that well a portion of the community out on LinkedIn that wants to move to that particular community in that location where you're trying to sell it. So it's really a waste of your energy and your time in a lot of respects to try to sell a house on LinkedIn. And I would agree with Michael on that. It is a wonderful place and the place for building relationships, professional relationships. That's what it's for. And there are many ways you can do that. So Michael has some great tips, uh, you know, and if you would like to find out more information on the uh, ability to use LinkedIn for, you know, relationship building. Uh, we can put together a um, session or an episode about that if you'd like. If you want to leave me a comment in our show notes at goalgettingpodcast.com slash Michael, goalgettingpodcast.com slash Michael, we will talk about that. Uh, you know, you can tell me what you think if you'd like to have a specific episode related to LinkedIn and, you know, how to build the relationships on LinkedIn. Or maybe we can put together a webinar of some sort on that. So let me know. Uh, I can get some other experts. We've had a couple experts on Goal Getting Podcast on LinkedIn, and I've got some folks that I work with that are experts on LinkedIn. We can get together and maybe do a webinar of some sort to help you learn more about putting together, you know, the right kind of relationship tools with LinkedIn. But as Michael was saying, it is a relationship tool. And I said that as well. You know, it's a platform for building relationships. You don't want to spam people. You don't want to, you know, first time you connect with somebody, don't make your first connection experience a trying to sell stuff to them. That piss, excuse me, that ticks me off more than anything when I connect with somebody that, you know, looks like an good person to connect with and I make the first connection and then they send me this thing. Hey, I want you to do business with me. I've got something great I can sell you. 
I just met you. Why are you trying to sell me stuff when you don't even know what I do? You know, and it, it just turn off. It, it really is not a good thing to do. And a lot of people won't do that. There's other things about LinkedIn that Michael did not get into that you really need to focus on. One is just to let you know, you need to make sure you have a good professional photograph in your profile. Your profile must have a good photo on it. Don't leave the, the egg out there. Nobody does business with eggs and we don't want to do business with eggs. We want to deal business with people. It's a relationship tool. So make sure you have a good quality photograph out there. It doesn't have to be you in a suit or tux or anything like that. It has to be something that looks professional, that shows who you are. Don't do a selfie. Don't do, you know, a cutout where you and your spouse are, you know, at a party or something and you cut your spouse out, you know, and it'll kind of like get divorced. You know, you cut the picture off. Don't do that. But do a good quality picture. I mean, it doesn't have to be super professional, but make it look good. Get a good camera. The iPhone 6 series is a great camera to use and you can just get into a nice, room with uh, the right lighting and a nice clean wall, white or whatever color, you know, and do a good picture, you know, get dressed up and look nice. It doesn't have to be a suit and tie necessarily. If your industry that you're, you know, trying to maybe get a job in or that you're working in isn't a suit and tie business, then don't put on a suit and tie. You know, if your business is a casual type business, then be casual, business casual, whatever, but look professional, look nice and make sure you don't have an egg no matter what you do and or picture of, you know, you holding your dog or something like that. But you should have a good picture of yourself as you are, you know, that describes you, but a professional picture. This is not Facebook. So make sure that you put that out there. The other thing that you want to do is uh, make sure that you fill out your profile. Make sure that you have the right information in your summary. Go look at Michael's summary and see what he does. If you're in business and you're trying to communicate with other businesses, go out there and look at Michael's. He has set up his summary in such a way that it tells people what he does. And as Michael talks about in you know some of his seminars, you have to tell the story about how you can help your customer. Your summary isn't about you. It's about how you can help your customer. What can you do for them? They don't really care what you've done or whatever, but they want to know what you can do for them. So if you're in business and you're using LinkedIn, make sure your summary is not some fluff out there or not stuff talking about you. It's not about you. It's about your customer and who your prospective customer may be. So make sure that you put something in your summary that tells what you're going to be able to do for your customer. If you're looking for work, if you're looking for a job or a professional career, same sort of thing. Make sure that it's geared to what your strengths are, what you're doing, how you can help your future customer or your future boss in your future company, uh, you know, do what they want to do. So anyway, I'm going to leave it at that on that one. So if you uh, will use the publisher out there, as Michael said, you know, the best thing about that, he quit blogging. His blog is out there and he's got it. But Right now, the publisher is the way to go. If you've built up your following on LinkedIn, you have a ready audience out there. Instead of going out and putting up a blog out on, you know, WordPress or Blogger or Blog or something like that, you've got the ability to tap into an already built following. So go out there and use it there. So. LinkedIn is a powerful tool. Get in touch with Michael. He'll be glad to answer any questions that you have, talk to you. You know, he has a great service where he can help you build your LinkedIn profile. He's got some great tips on the photograph and also your background or, you know, the profile picture. You want to make sure that's a good picture. And, uh, but get in touch with Michael Yablowski. He's got contact information. He's got a cell phone on our show notes page. You can go there and pick up his cell phone number, text him and give him a call. He's more than willing to help you, you know, get the goals that you set when it comes to LinkedIn. So have a great day. The key is have the goals. What do you want to do? Who do you want to get in touch with? Targeted search marketing is key on LinkedIn. Goal getters, thank you so much for coming today and listening to our show. I hope you learned a lot. If you've got questions about LinkedIn, get in contact with me, get in contact with Michael. We'll see if we can't put you together. Whatever we need to do to help you get the goals that you set. Go out today and make it a great day. Come back and listen to us next week.